Mercy and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for this morning's message is recorded in Genesis, the 12th chapter, beginning with verse 1. The Lord had said to Abram, Leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you'll be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Your friends of Jesus, our Savior. I don't know about you, but the older I get, the faster time seems to fly. Just last week, a friend of mine came up to me and said, is it me? Is it you as well? Time just goes by so Quickly, I can't believe it's December already. However, this isn't the same for everyone. As I said last week, for children, it seems to take forever for Christmas to come. And in the season of Advent, while we do have a countdown using an Advent wreath, an Advent calendar, and Advent chains to celebrate Christ's birth. It's really a season to remind us and to prepare us for that great day when Jesus comes in all his glory. It's a season for us to always be prepared for that day. The hard part is, we don't know when it's going to happen. We don't know the day or the hour. And so we are to wait. So think of all the people from the beginning because God made a promise that a Savior, a Messiah, would be born. Just think of all the, the people waiting for that event to happen. In the video, you saw the painter 
showed a number of God's people who are waiting for the promised Messiah. Did you see them? Did you recognize all of them who were waiting? As I said last week, many of them, if not all of them, it probably couldn't happen fast enough, but it didn't. They had to wait. They had to wait for the Messiah, the Savior we know who is Jesus, to come and set God's people free. And so today we continue our sermon series, Come Along Expected Jesus, to keep us ready for the day when Jesus comes again. Now, last week we talked about how God sets all people free. He came to set them free because when Adam and Eve sinned, immediately they were living in bondage. Because of the sins of their sin, they were enslaved. And that means they were now God's enemies instead of God's friends. They were now living in the, in the kingdom of the dominion of darkness instead of living in the light. And they were now slaves to death because the wages of sin is death. Yet God in his love and his mercy and grace gave them and the whole world a promise. As God was given the consequences to the serpent, Satan, for tempting Adam and Eve, he said, cursed are you above all the livestock and all the wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And if it wasn't bad enough to be cursed, God then lets us know that's not the end of his punishment. Listen, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, it says, And I, God, will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. And again, what this is saying, that there's going to be enmity, there's going to be hostility between Satan's followers and Eve's descendants who would become God's believing children. However, the promise culminates in the hostility between Satan and Christ. Jesus, who is one of Eve's descendants, would face all the evil and hostility that Satan would throw at him and would ultimately cost the Savior his life. But Satan's Enmity was futile. Yes, Jesus endured all the hostility Satan tried to throw at him, but in the end, Jesus crushed Satan's head, just like God promised. At first, it didn't look like Jesus would be the victor. At first, it looked as if Satan would win because Jesus became sin for us. He hung on that cross, and then he died. But then he proved he was victorious when on the third day he rose from death to life. Satan was defeated. John chapter 3, verse 8, it says, the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. And that, my friends, is exactly what Jesus did. He destroyed all the, our enemies of sin, death, and the devil, and that means through Jesus Christ we are free. And that is one of the great blessings that God gave to Adam and Eve and the world and to us, even though we have all sinned. Jesus was the long-expected Messiah. Again, however, he didn't come right away. God's people had to wait. And one of the people that were, was waiting for the Messiah, who was depicted in the video, was a man by the name of Abram or Abraham. You're going to hear me say Abram or Abraham because his name was Abram, but then God changed it to Abraham. Same person. Abram knew the promise given to Adam and Eve. But then God was going to give him another promise to assure God's people that he hasn't forgotten them, that he will keep and fulfill his promise. And so as Josiah was teaching the children, it's like getting a piece of the puzzle. The first piece was a promise given to Adam and Eve, and then God gives more pieces of the puzzle over time where then he's going to reveal the whole picture. So one of the pieces of the puzzle, or should I say, one of the promises was through Abram and his family, all peoples on earth would be blessed. God would bless all people, not just those who are living at the time of Abraham and thereafter, but all people beginning with Adam and Eve until Jesus comes again. Again, in Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 3, it says, The Lord had said to Abram, Leave your country and your people and your father's household and go to the land I will show you. 
I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Now when we look at this promise, it's twofold. First, God will bless Abram and his family. When God told Abram to leave his country and his relatives, God promised him blessings. And one of those blessings was a land, the land of Canaan or the promised land. God would make his family into a great nation with many children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, enough to populate a nation. And God will make his name great. When Abram left his country and his people, in a sense, he lost his name No one knew him like they did back home. And once more, when he was given the promise, he had no children to carry on his name. But now think of Abraham's name. Now the greatest name above all names is the name of Jesus. For at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. But maybe Abraham's name will come in a close will come in second. So many religions, even though they are false religions, talk about Abraham and his importance. And God would bless all those who bless Abraham. God, again, God made all these promises and blessings, even though Abraham and Sarah had no children, because Sarah was barren. However, God would wait until her womb was as good as dead because of her old age to give them a son. God would wait until it was physically impossible to have a child. But not impossible with God. And so why was this son so important? Their son was important because it was through Abraham's lineage so a son had to be given. Sound familiar? That all peoples on earth would be blessed through him. Not only was Abraham blessed, promised the promise, Abraham promised blessing, but then God would use Abraham to make him a blessing, even to the point where all families on earth will be blessed through Abraham. And so this amazing promise was fulfilled in the Messiah that came from Abram's lineage. God blessed him not just for his own sake or for the sake of the Jewish nation to come. It was for the whole world. It was for all families on earth through Jesus Christ. And that means, as I said last week, all those who believed in the Messiah to come, who they didn't know yet, and all those who believed in Jesus as the Messiah at the time when Jesus was on earth, and everyone who has believed in him ever since, who believed that he came and is coming again, would be blessed. Because everyone from Adam and Eve even until Jesus comes, anyone who believes in him will be blessed, will be blessed with everlasting life. Everyone who believes and puts their faith in God's promise of a Savior, who is Jesus, will be blessed for all eternity. And that's why we can sing or say the words of the hymn, Come, O long-expected Jesus, born to set your people free, From our fears and sins release us by your death on Calvary. Israel's strength and consolation, hope to all the earth impart, dear desire of every nation, joy of every longing heart. My friends, if you are a believer in Jesus Christ or as a believer in Jesus Christ, you are blessed. You have been blessed by Jesus. He has given you the forgiveness of all your sins. He has given you peace no matter what conflict is happening in your life or in the world. He has given you contentment knowing that he has given you everything that you need in Christ. He has given you his love so that you know that you are loved with an everlasting love and so that you can then share that love with others. He is giving you joy because the real joy is the joy of our salvation in Jesus Christ. Jesus has blessed you so that you can then go out and be a blessing to others. Because in the end, it doesn't matter how much you've accumulated. It doesn't matter how big your house is. In the the end, it doesn't matter whether 
people forget your name. In the end, it doesn't matter if people think of you as great. In the end, these things don't matter. What matters is that people know and believe in Jesus. Our life should be like John the Baptist who said, I must decrease and he, Jesus, must increase. And that means as we wait for Jesus to come, again, what should we be doing? We should be doing just what God has called us to do. We should be doing the things that we would normally do as we wait. And one of the things we should be doing is pointing people to Jesus through whatever it is that God has called us to do. 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 15 to 16 says, But in your hearts set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer for every, to everyone who asks you to give you the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. In other words, because Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, when people ask you for the hope that you have, be ready to tell them about Jesus. And even if they don't ask you, if you can see that they are down, they feel they're feeling just out of sorts, feel as if they have no hope, you can ask them a couple questions. Tell me what's going on. Are you okay? And maybe they'll tell you that they feel hopeless, and then you can say, well, can I share the hope that I have? And then if they do, you tell them about Jesus. You tell them how Jesus has freed you from sin, death, and the devil through his life, death, and resurrection. Tell them how you have been blessed spiritually because of Jesus and that you are ready for the day when Jesus comes again. Tell them about peace and joy and contentment that only come through Jesus. Tell them about Jesus because not only are we being obedient to God, but just as important, tell them about Jesus so that they too can be saved and then they can be a blessing to others. And so a great way to begin each day is to pray, come, O long expected Jesus, and use me to be a blessing to others as you have blessed me. To God be the glory. Amen. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we do thank you that you are a God of promise and that you keep all your promises just like you did from the very beginning. We thank you that all the promises you gave from beginning with Adam and Eve came true when your son, our Savior Jesus, came into this world and who did everything in our place to get us ready for the day when he comes again. And so, Lord, we thank you that by your Spirit you have given us faith in Jesus, who is the Messiah, and we pray that you would keep us ready for that day as we continue to share the hope that we have in Jesus with others. Come, O long-expected Jesus, come soon. Amen.